You want to have a big 2024? You absolutely need skill set. You got to work on your skill set. You need real world strategies. You need real world support. And you need somebody that is your advocate, a warrior behind you to remind you of your greatness in those moments of need. There are so many good people listening to this, so many good people that can make a huge difference, that can, could save lives, that could make the world a better place, and who deserve to be rich. The problem is they're sitting around waiting. Hopium is a really horrible strategy. You need to be committed. You need to have a high standard. We'll show you how to get your beliefs in alignment, and then you got to develop the skill set. And the time to do it is now. Welcome to another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. I'm your host, Nikki Ballou. And boy, do we have an incredible, exciting episode lined up for you today. Today's episode is another Thought Leader Nugget, and it features my favorite guest of all time, my brother from another mother, the one, the only, the legendary Mark Von Muster. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thanks. Great to be here. Excited for our topic today as well. It's going to be a, a blow the lid off, and anybody wanting to have a huge 2024 needs to pay attention. Yeah, I agree. Mark, you know, the other day you and I were chatting offline and uh, I, I mentioned to you that I think that right now, a reason a lot of people are not experiencing the level of success that they want is because they they don't believe in themselves as much as they should. They don't have someone to believe in them that is going to ignite that greatness within and they their enrollment skills are shall we say mediocre, <laughs> mm-hmm. subpar. And, and, I, and, I, and I mentioned to you that I thought this was the biggest reason people are failing. And you said, well, yes, and they need something else to get momentum into 2024. So I said, okay, let's talk about it. So take it away. Let's talk about it. So one of the things too, and I gave you a bet and everybody listening, and I don't know, Nikki, I don't know if you can check to make sure my audio is working. I can't see because my numbers isn't going up um, the deal. But it sounds basically, good. Okay, good. But basically, in a nutshell, most people think Usain Bolt is the fastest person on the planet. He was for many Olympics, right? And I I made you a bet that I bet you is any amount of money that I can beat Usain Bolt every single time in the 100-yard dash. Not only that, I can even beat him in the 200-yard dash. Now, that sounds like big bravado. And most people who don't understand how the game's played would go ahead and say it's impossible. It's not only impossible, it's inevitable. There is no chance in hell that Usain Bolt can beat me. None, zero. And one of the things about that is what people don't realize is we get to set the rules for the game. So when I say that, I'm going to start at the 80-yard mark for a 100-yard dash, maybe a 90-yard mark, I'm not quite sure. But even in my elder state, if I have an 80-yard head start, again, Usain Bolt, even the fastest guy on the planet who he's been for many years, I will beat him in a 100-yard dash because I only have to run 20 meters. And it's funny because people don't realize when we were kids, we did that. Remember when we were kids and you're playing tag and you're like, okay, um, I'll, I'll race you to, and they start running going to the tree and you've already got a 20-yard head start. Yeah, and, yeah. and remember, we all did that as kids. Well, I'm going to yeah. recommend we do that again for 2024. So here's what I mean by that. Most people start mentally taking their foot off the gas uh, right about now. We're coming into the holidays. Nikki, I don't know if I told you, but we have real Thanksgiving coming up in November. <laughs> we have Christmas and oh boy, Christmas parties, office parties. We got to go to the kids, uh, kids Christmas play. And there's all these things that take our focus. That's the norm for most people. You and I talked about as well how we showed up during the holidays and literally had our best months ever. So why? What happens is how you finish 2023, you're either going to create momentum and get a running head start, or you're going to go ahead and be stuck. Now, here's what's going to happen to those that get stuck. January is going to come around and you're going to be stuck in the mud. Every year we see it. Last 15 years, 20 years, if I go into real estate, I've watched the same thing every time. And what happens is people get stuck. So January turns into February very quickly before they really get going. And then nothing happens because there's no momentum. And then maybe they're getting some momentum by, by March. But now they're already behind. So one of the things that we've been teaching for a very long time is quarter four is critical for quarter uh, 2024. So before you get your skill sets, before you do that, would you rather get your skill sets dialed in now? Would you rather get your 
your messaging dialed in now. Would you like to figure out where you're going to speak now? Get that the bugs out of the way. Get that. Even when I started a diet, when I was starting to transform my physique, I would usually take one to two months where I'm dialing in my diet, finding out how to what kind of sugar-free this I should be eating, what kind of protein powders I can digest, things like that. And it took me a while. So when I did Body for Life, we had 12 weeks from this day to this day. I spent a month or two beforehand dialing it in, getting my workout routine dialed in. Most people don't do that. And out of 250,000 people that entered the Body for Life Challenge with Bill Phillips back in the 80s or 90s, I don't even know anymore, I made it to the top 50. Wow. Yeah. And it was anywhere from number 13 to the 50. That group, I didn't make the final 12. I was in the next group. I was one of the finalists. And the big part of it is I did not necessarily learn any new strategies, but what I did was get it dialed in. I got momentum. I got past the muscle soreness. So when day one of that Body for Life Challenge, I was in the peak of my training. I had my momentum. I didn't have to think about what I was going to do. I didn't have to worry about what my calories should have been. And I had huge transformation in 12 weeks. So I'm going to challenge everybody here. You want to have a big 2024? You absolutely need skill set. You got to work on your skill set. There's no ands, ifs, or buts. You cannot be a total hack on the phone and expect to enroll. You also have to have your mindset dialed in. But you also need to have your actions set up, your habits, your rituals. Those have to be dialed in and spend the next two months. It gives you the ultimate advantage over everyone else who's waiting for the new year. So when you enter the marketplace, whether you're in real estate, whether you're in lending, whether you're in business, all of a sudden you're running in a full sprint. January comes, man, and it's go time. So that's just something I would throw out there. Um, And I'll tell you more stories about how I've applied this mentality repeatedly, even when I was director of coaching at Tony Robbins. So, so Mark, I think this is awesome. And I'll tell you the story for myself and and then I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to you. So we're talking, it's, um, 1999 between Christmas and new year's. And I was working at a corporation and my, um, boss's boss decided no holidays. We're all working. Everybody else got time off. We didn't. Right. I I was annoyed, but I came in, uh, you know, good soldier and all that. And my boss at the time was not a fan of mine. And I was not a fan of his gave me what he thought was going to be a really, really small account, a $30 a month account. And, and it was on December 28th that I met with this fellow. His name was Ross Morley. And we met and Ross and I, we hit it off. And Ross said, well, listen, you know, Nikki, I kind of like you. I actually have a need for more than this. Do you think you guys could do a live stream uh, from a bar about this new beer, Stella Artois, it was called at the time. I'm like, yeah, we can do it. I didn't know if we could or we couldn't, but I, I said, yeah, we can do it. And remember, this is 1999, right? Live streams weren't a thing. So he said, great. So that $30 a month deal quickly turned into $5,000, quickly turned into $30,000, quickly turned into $50,000, $150,000, and $500,000. It ended up being the biggest single sale any salesman had ever had at that company, bar none. I became salesman of the year. I won President's Club. Because on December 28th, where everybody else was chilling, I was doing business. I love and it. And that's really what you're talking about, right? Yes, very much. Um, I remember hearing this before, but there's no competition in business between the hours of four and seven in the morning. And there's no competition in the final two weeks of, of December. There's very little competition in December, very little com- competition in January. And now it's like, everybody's going to start their diet January 1st. Everyone's going to quit smoking January 1st. And they don't. You want to quit smoking? Start now. Get the bugs out. Figure out, get your withdrawals out now. Figure out what you need to to compensate for it, et cetera. But Nikki, I love that story too. But God rewards the bold and those willing to serve. That's really what you were doing in that moment. And one, a lot of people don't realize it, but I'll give you another example. I was director of coaching at Tony Robbins and the big metric that we were judged by was um, what are called re-enrolls, okay? Meaning you sign up 100 contracts for coaching 
And at the end of uh, three months, six months, or one year, how many of them decided to sign up again for more coaching? So it was a really good metric to look at because it it explained the experience. It explained um, whether they were getting transformational results. Now, during the year, the the company had gone from 27% uh, re-enrolls, 24% re-enrolls, 21%, and then 18%. It was dropping 3% to 4% per year. They couldn't stop it. So they called me in. And when I got there, I asked people and I started looking. So the first thing I noticed was they had a very low expectation and a very low standard for excellence. That was the first thing is what is your standard? The second thing I looked at was their beliefs were all black. They were just plain to see. They thought 20 re-enrolls in one month was a really big month because they averaged on average about 15, maybe 20. But in quarter four, it dropped all the way down to seven to 12 per month. So for a company with 55 coaches and thousands of coaching programs, they only were getting seven people to 12 people in October, November, and December. So they would do about 20, 24 re-enrolls for that time. So here's what I did. I interviewed every one of the coaches. I also talked to the salespeople that sold the coaching and they all were congruent. They all said the same story. You can't sell coaching during the holidays. Look, we've done this for 10 years. We know how this goes. This is not. This is when people are taking vacations. They can't afford it. They're buying gifts. They're buying presents. They're buying this. They all, every single one of them had the same beliefs. They had a low standard to begin with, but they really drove it into the grave by having a low set of beliefs that didn't empower. I had a different set of beliefs. I had a different set of beliefs where I believe that it's the best time to buy coaching because this is the time you need to gain momentum. This is the time that you're going to commit and get that headed start, like I said, against Usain Bolt. And what I did was I interviewed all 55 coaches and I said, here's what I believe. And I got them. And out of that first group, we did a 90 day challenge in the final quarter out of 55 coaches, 55 coaches. I had about 25 that were going to play along and about 20 that actually did. What was the result? We did 150 re-enrolls that quarter. Wow. Not 20 per month during the best quarters, not seven per quarter because that was the apples to apples was seven to 10. So not 30, we did 150, but it gets better. All of a sudden, the next year we did over 300. The third year we did 450 re-enrolls in the final quarter. Now, here's what happened. Once I raised the standard, I also got them to raise their beliefs. And yes, I gave them a skill set to show them how to do it. So you do need those parts. But the third year of doing it, we did 450 re-enrolls. That's 150 re-enrolls in a month. Now, let's jump ahead five years. I'm now working with with a different company, Clients On Demand, and I'm helping people build millionaire biz online businesses. And some of the salespeople, I asked them, well, how's sales? And they go, oh my God, well, we're coming into quarter four. That's always our biggest quarter. Everybody buys coaching. So we're really banking on a big quarter this year. And all of a sudden, the entire beliefs and standards was if you did less than three, 400, you had a crappy quarter. So it was always possible. And now here's the secondary benefit that we didn't get to yet. Not only did we crush 450 in the final quarter, but what it did was raise the standard and the beliefs to such a level. We did it again in January. We did it again in the second quarter. We did it in the third quarter and it became our baseline because we got people connected. We gave them the skill set, but before the skill set comes your beliefs. Before your beliefs comes your standard and what you're willing to accept and what you're committed to. So that's how we did it. We turned it around there. I've done the same thing at at Clients on Demand where we do it, where we have 90-day challenges, 30-day sprints. The time to start running for 2024 is right now. So let's walk that one through. Let's say everybody right now starts getting committed and we show them. And Nikki, you've done this with some of your recent clients. They just joined your program. And in the first week, he had three new clients. Another one had a really big one because they did one strategy that you teach and they're getting five, 10, 20, $30,000 worth of new clients. So let's say you do that every other week till the end of the year. Do you think you're going to be more fired up if you did 20, 30, 40, $50,000 in the next six weeks? 
If you have a full sprint, by the time Jan uh, January gets here, you've got 50, 60, 100, $200,000 in the bank. You're ready for a big year. You're going to expect it. Your standards higher, your beliefs are higher, and you develop the skill set because we can fast track that too. But that's kind of what I say, why it is critical for people that want to have a big 2024 is do not take your foot off the gas. This is your opportunity because everyone else is taking their foot off the gas, whether they know it or whether they even acknowledge it. Yeah, I think that's what we call this episode, man. Step on the gas. Step on the gas because that's what everybody needs to do. And I think that's very powerful, Mark. As you were saying this, I was taking some notes. I had to crack open a new notebook because my notebook's downstairs right now and someone's in the room and they're, I think they're taking a nap. But December is the best time to sell high ticket coaching. And I sell six figures plus in December. That's Those are some kick-ass beliefs to, yep. to create, right? And and the 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 mission 40 challenge that we have for ourselves that's our 90 day challenge and to do that we got to raise the standard raise the beliefs raise the skill set right and you said yep. this very powerfully before you can raise the skill set you need to raise your belief before you can raise your belief you need to raise your standard which essentially means you need to raise the level at which you're willing to perform you're not willing to to accept a, a performance any less than x so I think that's super powerful. I'm game. Let's go. Mission 40. We're looking for 40 heart-driven people that really want to take their life to a whole new level. I'm excited to team up with you, Mark, to get Mission 40 going. And you and I, along with the lovely and talented Teresa, are doing something December 28, 29 called Get Booked and Get Paid. You want to talk a bit about that? Sure. Um, this is something, guys, that we've talked about, and and I talked to Nikki about this. When did I first start talking to you about this? Way back when? Yeah, 2021, I think. Yeah. So this goes back a bit, guys. And one of the things about Nikki that you might or might not know, but he's made over a million dollars selling books. But what he noticed was books became less and less effective as a sales tool, as a new business tool. And this is from one of the very few, maybe one in 10,000 that actually made money. I would say arguably Nikki, and I don't know the specific number, but I know it's small. I've worked with countless authors and none of them make money. But my guess, you are one of the one out of a hundred thousand people that actually made over a million dollars with books. It's very small. And Nikki started going and he started talking to me and he's like, yeah, I'm just noticing it's less and less effective. And, and it took him a hundred, 200 hours to write a book. And this is a guy that's a prolific writer and a prolific reader. So he can knock out a book faster than most. And he knows how to get there. He knows how to publish. He knows how to go ahead and pick a topic and support it. The guy's a great writer and reader. And he kept going, well, you know, it's just getting harder and harder. And we started talking about how to go ahead. And he has also one of the top podcasts in North America. Okay. What's it called, Nikki? Thought Leaders? Thought Leader Revolution. Yeah. So one Thought Leader right Revolution. Now. <laughs> okay. But he has one of the highest rated podcasts in North America. And one of the things he was talking and asking me, because I have a lot of friends that, that have podcasts and very few of them make money. Same thing as books. But I talked to him and we talked about how to make money with podcasts. And so Nikki decided to do it because Nikki is an action first guy. He doesn't talk. He makes his decisions based on his dream and his goal and his commitment level. He does not base his goal or his uh, commitment based on convenience. You got to get that. You want to make money in 2024? You need to commit now. You need to decide now that you're in. So when I talk about standard, it is also your level of commitment to your goal and your higher self. So Nikki did that. And then Nikki started doing that and using a handful of strategies that did not need to require him to pay money for advertising. He did not have to do a funnel. He did not have to do anything except learn where to talk, what to say, and how to get in front of the right people. Now doing that, how much money did you make, Nikki, over 18 months using that strategy with no ad spend? with no other part other than knowing how to talk, because that's what they're all missing. The people that have podcasts, they don't know how to what to say and how to say it to get. But how much money did you make in new clients because of what you're you're applying and what you're going to be teaching? I made over $340,000 from May 2022 through October of this year. Okay, got it. So not bad. Now, now most of you are thinking, you know, sh crap, 340,000 in a year and a half. So that's about 250,000 or plus or minus a year. Now, obviously for that kind of money, you probably had to work 40, 50, 60, 80 hours a week, correct? 
No, it was about eight to 12 hours a week. Eight to 12 hours a week to make $250,000 a year. Huh? I wonder if you're onto something and he is guys, and that's what we're going to be covering. So if you want to figure out how to add a quarter of a million dollars in the next year or two or more, that's Nikki was testing it out and, and we had to get through his belief cycle and all that. And he had to develop his skill set, which we did. But if you want to figure out how to add a quarter of a million dollars without a dollar of ad spend, then you should attend. You need to make it a priority because everyone else is sitting on their butt hoping. Hope is a hopium is a really horrible strategy. It will not get where you need to go. You need to be committed. You need to have a high standard. We'll show you how to get your beliefs in alignment, and then you got to develop the skill set. And the time to do it is now. So I can't stress enough. It works. It works for everybody that wants to go do it. Yeah. Amen, Mark. Well said. Bang on. Um, You know, hopium. I I love that phrase, hopium, because uh, hopium, you're right, absolutely is not a strategy. And the only the only thing that works is intelligent, incessant, decisive action. There's someone I know who said that. I You're right. His first name is Mike or Mac or someone or like Mark that. On you, sir. There you go. That's who it was. That's who it was. Yeah. It, it, it's the only thing that works. It's the only thing that works. Hope yeah. and change yeah. is a nice slogan, but it doesn't work in real life. It doesn't. And it's a great political strategy or slogan. I'm, I'm going to give him that one. But when I talk about hopium and I would ch- ch- challenge you on one thing, Nikki, it is a strategy, but it's a strategy for failure. And that's the part that breaks my heart. There are so many good people listening to this. So many good people that can make a huge difference that can, could save lives that could make the world a better place and who deserve to be rich. But the problem is they're sitting around waiting. They're not making their decisions based on their goal. They're looking for convenient or something easy. I can tell you, you are not going to find your dream watching TikTok videos and YouTube experts. It's not going to happen. You need real world strategies. You need real world support. And you need somebody that is your advocate, a warrior behind you to remind you of your greatness in those moments of need because you will wobble. And again, You know, when you have those pieces in place and then you're doing that intelligent, incessant, inspired action and you're decisive, you can't lose because now you're taking action and you're taking action and you're taking the right action. You're not having to reinvent the wheel. If I want to get from point A to point Z in the snow, I remember I did this thing at, uh, with Joe DeSena of Spartan, right. And, um, super great guy. Love this guy. And we're in Vermont in the middle of winter and it's a full moon and it's 10 feet of snow on the ground, 10 feet. And I've never been snowshoeing and I went snowshoeing with him. And guess what happens when you're out in the middle, in the middle of the night, if I need to get from point A to point B or C, do I want to break my own snow or follow the path that's already been cut? Follow the path, follow the path. Don't reinvent it guys. I stepped off trail once I dropped down below and you couldn't see me. I was so far in the snow because I didn't follow the path. I stepped off. I wasn't paying attention. I plummeted. I was like, Oh God, how do I get out of this? So you learn, but for everybody out there, guys, uh, check in with yourself was 2023 was 2022. It's not COVID. It's not the lockdowns. It's not the recession. You're taking strategies that aren't working. You're reactionary. You're not intentional. You're not bringing the best version of you to the party. If you want to change that, then you need to attend. You need to find out more and get there. I don't care if it's convenient. I'm only looking for warriors. I don't care how broke you are. Warriors and people that are committed always find a way. If you are sitting out there with $100 million, no offense, I don't want you to come because you're sitting on your ass and you already got what you want. I want the person who's hungry, the person who doesn't have what they want, who's ready to change it. When you have that in your gut, you cannot be denied if you'd have that intelligent, incessant, inspired action. And that's Amen. the part too that I want to speak to. Amen. So we're going to put a link in the show notes for um, one of the webinars we're going to set up. Teresa's going to set up those webinars for us. So we'll make sure we put those. We'll also put a link for you to just come and sign up for the event. If that's something you want, you're ready to do right away, I recommend that you do it. Um, and if you need to have a conversation, if you have any questions or whatever, just jump on my calendar. It's uh, eastcircleacademy.com forward slash appointment. I'll answer any questions that you have. Mark, always awesome to spend time with you, brother. Thanks so much. God bless you, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Big love. Thanks for letting me chat. All the best, people. All right. Bolu out. 
This episode has been brought to you by eCircleAcademy.com, the proven system to add six to seven figures a year to your thought leader practice.